All right, so on your notes, you have three examples side by side, and they go vertically. And so that's what we're going to do here. We're going to do them vertically where we go from top to bottom. And so I might skip around a little bit, but it's really not as um, hard as you think. So I, I really want to encourage you to stick with me. First thing is, before we do um, the vertex and get into that nitty-gritty, let's just talk about the y-intercept, because the y-intercept is actually super easy. All you have to do is realize that, hey, if you're finding the y-intercept, x is 0. So think about that for a second. If you were to plug in 0 right here and right here, they disappear, right? So what is your, what are you left with? You're left with negative 8. Done. There you go. Your y-intercept is 0, negative 8. Okay? So that's kind of why the y-intercept is so easy. We tend to actually help people see that your y-intercept is actually, from standard form, is always going to be that c value. Whatever your c value is, that's your y-intercept. So if you want to write that down, you can. Your y-intercept is always 0, comma c, whatever the c value is. Now, let's get into the more important component, the axis of symmetry and the um, vertex. Remember, we start by finding the axis of symmetry. So let's write that down. x equals opposite of b. Well, what is my b value? My b value is negative 2. So if that's negative 2, the opposite of that is positive 2. So positive 2 over 2 times a. Well, 2 times a is just 2 times 1. So in this case, it's just 2 over 2, which means it's 1. Remember, that's such an important, important number that we call it h. So that's my h. Okay? We found our axis of symmetry. We have found our h. Next, step 2, I'm going to go back just to remind you, step 2 is to plug that h back in to the original equation. This equation up here. All right, we're going to plug it back in. So in a sense, all that we have is we're just going to have something squared minus 2 times something minus 8. And that something is the h we just found, this positive 1. So I'm just plugging 1 back into the equation. And as long as you um, can do order of operations, middle school stuff, you should be fine. 1 squared is still 1. Negative 2 times 1 is negative 2. So I have 1 minus 2 minus 8, right? So that's going to give me negative 9, right? Negative 9. So what I just found was k. That number, when you plug it in, gives you k. So what do we know? We know that my vertex is 1 comma negative 9. That's my vertex, 1 comma negative 9. So we've got our y-intercept, we've got our axis of symmetry, we've got our vertex. We're moving on to the actual table in the graph. Now here's how easy this is. Check it out. That vertex you just found, 1 negative 9. You always put the vertex, vertex goes in the middle. The vertex always goes smack dab in the middle. So 1 negative 9 goes boom, right there. Because remember that the vertex is the middle of your parabola. If i got to go all the way back to this picture, the vertex is smack dab in the middle. It's that line of symmetry. It's all smack dab in the middle. So we put in the middle of our table, 1, negative 9. Now, here's the part that's going to kind of weird you out. To figure out what this point, what this parabola looks like, all we really have to do is take one step backward and one step forward. What in the world do you mean? Well, think about this for a second. Pretend you're standing on a number line right? You're standing on a number line, and you're standing at the number 1, right? Because that's where you are. You're right here. You're standing at the number 1. Well, one step backward, and where would you land? You would land at 0, right? And one step forward, where would you land? You would land at 2, right? Because you're sitting at 1, don't forget. So that means that one step backward would be 0, and one step forward would be 2. So what we're going to have to do, now that we've done that, don't do that over here. Do not do that right here and right here. No, 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 no. Right? Don't do that on the right-hand side, on the, on the Y column. It's just the X column. So what we have to do is we have to plug in either the 0 or the 2. We don't have to plug in both. 
only one. The reason why I wanted to plug in one of them is because, let's go back to our picture. All right, I'm going to kind of clear some of that off so you can visualize this. Let's do one step forward here. Notice one step forward here landed me right there. Correct? Okay. But notice that one step backward, this direction landed me right here. They're at the same height, right? They're at the same Y value. So this is what I call my buy one, get one free deal, right? Because when I plug in this number, whatever that, this was a two, I get the same thing when I plug in zero, right? I can, I'm going to get the same thing because they're symmetrical. It's a buy one, get one free deal. So if I plug in zero, which we already have, by the way, we plugged in zero back here at the top right there. When we plugged in zero, we got negative eight. So guess what? I don't even have to pick up my pencil. I know that when I plug in two, I'm going to get negative eight. It's a BOGO deal, right? These guys are BOGOs. Buy one, get one. Okay, it's a BOGO deal. Buy one, get one free. And now that we have three points, that's enough for me to graph a parabola. So we can graph our parabola by going down here to one negative nine. So that's one negative nine right there. And then zero negative eight and two negative eight. And I know it just kind of looks like a little triangle right now, but we know what a parabola is supposed to look like. It's supposed to be a kind of a U shape. So that's what we're going to do. We're just going to start at the parabola. I'm mean, sorry, at the vertex and then curve upwards. Start at the vertex and curve upwards. There you go. It does not need to be a beautiful work of art. That's all we're trying to get, okay, is the, that visual graph itself. All right, there is one more box at the bottom of your column about domain and range, but I'm going to save all of this for all the domain and ranges for the very end. All right, so we're going to go in the next video um, to our next practice.